Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Mr. Bob Hope in Ring Lardner's Elmer the Great on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars and outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight, we have the pleasure of bringing to you a story by one of the world's greatest humorists, Ring Lardner. Ring Lardner belongs to that distinguished company of American sports writers who have not only enriched the language, but have added to the genuine literature of our time. Indeed, I should think no anthology of great short stories could possibly be compiled without including one of Lardner's, and it might very well be our selection for tonight. Ring Lardner was educated at Michigan University, where he studied, of all things, mechanical engineering, but he soon found his real bent. Among his best-known short stories is one called Hurry Kane, a fine baseball story, and this he turned into a stage play entitled Elmer the Great. We have taken the liberty of modernizing it for our version tonight at the height of baseball's great yearly spectacle, the World Series, and we have the privilege of presenting Bob Hope as Elmer. But now before our curtain, here is Frank Goss with a brief message from Hallmark. There are Hallmark cards for every memorable occasion on your calendar. Yes, for every occasion that calls for remembrance, there is a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And that identifying name on the back, Hallmark, well, that says you cared enough to send the very best. Now, our curtain. Hallmark Playhouse, starring Bob Hope in Ring Lardner's Elmer the Great. His name was Elmer Kane, sometimes known as Hurry Kane, sometimes known as Elmer the Great. He was the pride of Gallipolis, Ohio. Hurry ball! There have always been two schools of talk about Elmer the people who said he wasn't as dumb as he looked, and the ones that said he didn't look as dumb as he was. This is the story just as it happened, and you'll have to make up your own mind about who was right. It all came to a head one Sunday as Elmer was eating breakfast. Gee, I'm still sleepy, Ma. What time is it? Oh, about 2.30 in the afternoon. How long did I sleep? About 12 hours. Doggone that insomnia. Maybe I could get a nap before dinner, huh? Elmer, would you like some more eggs? Yeah, might give me another dozen. <laughs> no, I guess not. We got plenty, you know. The hens are really laying. I know. Since that rooster heard what they're selling for, he's been chasing around hollering smaller ones and faster. <laughs> well, look, how about a... How about another slice of ham? Ma, oh, you know, if I eat hearty this time of day, it'll spoil my dinner. Hey, Elmer! Gee, I'm glad you're up. I've been waiting to talk to you for hours. Pass the bread. Elmer, I was talking to Amy a little while ago. Now pass me another loaf. Elmer, listen to me. Amy said a man was in the newspaper office yesterday asking for your address. He's going to sign you to play with the Cleveland Indians. I know. I refused him already. Refused him? Don't you like the Cleveland Indians? Oh, the team's all right, but they tell me the restaurants there are closed at midnight. <laughs> Here's some donuts, Elmer. Oh, thanks, Ma. I needed a pusher to trap this piece of egg. Hey, Ma, Elmer's got a chance to sign with the Cleveland Indians. I'm not joining the Indians. I'm a Gene Autry fan. <laughs> Elmer, listen to me. If you go with the Indians, you may become the greatest pitcher in the world. Naturally. Gee, I... I wish I could pitch like you. I really wish I could pitch like you. Well, you can't expect two like me in the same generation. <laughs> Elmer, sometimes I think you're an egotist. Nick, you leave your brother alone. Elmer's the smartest, sweetest, finest... Slower, Ma. I declare when I think of Elmer, I could cry. I didn't know any boy could be that wonderful. That's all right, Ma. It wouldn't be so wonderful if you hadn't been around when I was born. 
<laughs> Elmer, for Pete's sake, you got a chance to pitch for Cleveland. No, sir. You can make a name for yourself and earn a lot of money. You got a chance to put Gallup Police on the map. No. Was that all you can say is no, no? The word's good enough for General Eisenhower. It's good enough for me. <laughs> I'm not joining the Cleveland Indians. A fine brother. How can I show my face after this? Goodbye. Ma, oh, you know I got my reasons for not leaving Gallup Police. Yeah, sure, Elmer. And Nellie's a fine girl. Ain't she pretty, Ma? When she wears them green earrings, I can't help thinking how she looks so much like a T-bone with a little parsley on it. (laughs) And she's a smart girl, too, Elmer. I know, Ma. Well, I guess you can't have everything. I'm going to walk down to the store now. (laughs) Cleveland Indians. That's all I hear, Indians, Indians. Am I a man or am I a papoose? I know what I want. I've loved Nellie ever since we went down to that bakery together and smelled the hot bread. (laughs) But she's just a hot woman after all. (laughs) What's a woman? Just a rag, a bone, and a hank of hair. (laughs) Doggone, why do they put the three together so nice? (laughs) I gotta get a grip on myself. I'm going to walk right up to her and say, Nellie, it's now or never. Hmm. No, she might say never. (laughs) Well, I'll say, Nellie, it's now or I can wait a little while. (laughs) I'm going to tell her. Hello, Elmer. Oh. Howdy, ma'am. Well, Elmer, why do you talk like that? Oh, I don't know, Nellie. I've been seeing too many Gary Cooper pictures, I guess. (laughs) Well, when you get back with the Cleveland Indians, you'll be too busy for movies, so don't worry. I ain't going with the Cleveland Indians, Nellie. I don't want to leave Gallup Police right now. Oh, but Elmer, it's such a wonderful opportunity. Mr. Wade, the Cleveland scout, phoned me. Wade phoned you, too? Yes, he thought since I'm your employer here at the store, I should be told about it. It's your big moment. Nellie, if you knew a guy that knew a girl, but the girl didn't know about the guy Karen, and the guy didn't know what to do about the girl not knowing about the guy Karen, and (laughs) the guy tried to tell the girl that didn't know about the guy Karen but couldn't, what would the guy do? What did you say, Elmer? I said, if you knew a guy that knew a girl, but the girl didn't know about the guy Karen, and the guy didn't know what to do about the girl not knowing about the guy Karen, and the guy tried to tell the girl that didn't know about the guy Karen, but couldn't, what would the guy do? Oh, well, that's very simple, Elmer. Yeah, well, you try saying it sometime. (laughs) Well, all the guy has to do is to tell the girl. There's nothing to it. No? What would he say? He'd say... I love you. Will you marry me? And what would the girl say? One of two things. Yes or no. Just two, huh? Get more chances than that, I'll stop the music. (laughs) Nellie, suppose I said it to you. Which one of those words would you say? If you said it to me? Don't you see, Nellie? Haven't you guessed? Honey, we need each other like those little paper pants need lamb chops. (laughs) That's why I won't go to Cleveland. Any pitching I do is going to be for you. Elmer, I'm sorry. You're sorry? Well, I don't know what to say, Elmer. I never guessed. I've been going out with Arbuthnot Lake. Arbuthnot Lake? (laughs) Nellie, what do you want, a man or a Pullman car? (laughs) Well, anyhow, that's the way it is, Elmer. You mean you don't love me? No. But that's impossible. (laughs) Okay, Nellie. That's the way you feel. Go and don't look back. I'll be changing into my baseball uniform. Goodbye, Elmer. Cleveland, here I come. Goodbye, Elmer. Keep this suitcase with you. It's your lunch. Goodbye, Ma. I'll be home as soon as we win the series. Goodbye, Elmer. Goodbye, Matta Harry. <laughs> this may be a sad day for me, but it's a great day for baseball. So long, Ma. <laughs> Say, Sutton, you're the captain, aren't you? That's right, Kane. Well, I'm getting a little fed up with this team. Already? You've only been here a week. Yeah, yesterday they made me go up to the clubhouse and ask for the key to the batter's box and... This morning, they told me to go out and buy a quick freeze unit for the hot corner. You think I'm a maroon or something? Well, I'm sorry. 
Hey, look, before I forget, did you get that notice to be at the ballpark for that special pitcher's practice at 3.30 in the morning? 3.30 in the morning? Why, Paul Revere didn't get up until 4 to save the whole country. <laughs> Who's the greater man, you or Paul Revere? Yeah, that's right. Well, uh, be at the field for pitching practice at 3.30. In the meantime, don't bite on any more practical jokes. I bet on my last one. So long. Gee, 3.30 in the morning. I hope my midnight snack settles before it's time for breakfast. <laughs> Quiet, fellas. Mr. Walker wants to say something. Now, look, you guys, when I say quit riding a rookie, I mean quit riding a rookie. Next guy that pulls anything on Kane is going to find himself in a Toledo uniform inside of ten days. When I got back from the ballpark this morning, he started packing. Packing? Yeah, he was going home. I've been practically on my knees ever since. I guess the guy's got no sense of humor. Well, neither have I anymore, so lay off him. Okay, boss, we'll knock off. Uh, is he coming here now? Yeah. Said he'd stop by on his way to eat. All right, Mr. Walker, we'll be good. Honest engine, uh, won't we, fellas? Yeah. Sure, sure. I'll see that you are. I'll see you later. All right, come on, where's that microphone? We'll give him a surprise. That well, is be, a surprise. Be careful of it now. The radio station wants it back. I'll put it up against the wall so it'll look like it's connected. Wait, call little Evelyn on the phone. You wised her up, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, she's all primed. Well, then we're all set. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Ella. Come on in. Ah, it's a shame you had that trip out to the ballpark for nothing. Yeah, nobody else showed up. Uh, this is Miss Evelyn Corey, Elmer. Hello, Elmer. Hello. Uh, Elmer, we've decided you're going to pitch the opening game of the season. Oh, want to win it, eh? Uh, we want to win all our games, Elmer. Sorry, I can't pitch all the games. Uh, Elmer, Miss, uh, Miss Corey's from the Columbia Broadcasting System. President Truman's asked her if she wouldn't come here and... Ask you to say just a few words over the radio. Gee, is he hoarse? It was President Truman's personal request. And Mr. Dewey wants you to mention his name, too. Now, if you'll sit right down at this table, Elma, they're, they're waiting at the broadcasting station to put you on the radio. Okay, what do I give away first? Now, now, quiet. Evelyn's about to introduce you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Evelyn Corey speaking. It is my pleasure to introduce to you one of the greatest figures of the national game of baseball has ever known. Mr. Elmer Kane. Oh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Elmer Kane speaking. I wish all the little boys in America the best of luck in baseball, the same like I, Lou Boudreau, Ted Williams, and many others. I'm glad Cleveland has got me, and I guess Cleveland will be glad to win the World Series. Say hello to President Truman. What? President Truman, he's listening. Is he home or out hissing Dewey? <laughs> oh, good evening, President Truman. This is Elmer Kane speaking. I hope you'll be at the World Series to see us and... Ladies and gentlemen, that's about all, except that this is a great game and one that I'm really proud to be associated with. You know, there's an American tradition that goes along with baseball, a baseball of sportsmanship and honor and fair play that's something to live up to. Some of us love it more than others, but it's hard to top the thrill that's there for everyone. When the umpire yells, play ball, and the ball goes through the air and the player swings. I do a lot of bragging about myself, probably much, too much. But it's because I think that being a good ball player is something to brag about. I'm proud of baseball, and I'm proud to be in it. Good night. Gee, Elmer, Oh, I... that was a wonderful speech, Elmer. Put it there, Elmer. Elmer, you got it. On the ball field, we can depend on you to drive in a run. On the radio, you know how to drive in a message. Hey, that reminds me. Let's go. Where, Elmer? A drive-in. I'm hungry. <laughs> Before James Hilton brings you the second act of Elmer the Great, starring Bob Hope, I'd like to introduce another star, lovely little Luana Patton, whose newest picture will be Walt Disney, So Dear to My Heart. Luana was the first little girl in America to receive a set of the colorful new Hallmark Dolls of the Nation. And I just love them, Mr. Goss. Learn from them, too, don't you, Luana? Oh, my, yes. They're real educational. In a way, it makes learning lots of fun. How's that, Luana? The verses on the inside of each doll. They're as cute as the dolls themselves. Listen to what it says on the inside of Anne of England. Her home was a... 
A home is a cottage with a roof made of straw. It's just about the cutest house you almost ever saw. If you were there this minute, Anne would meet you at the gate and ask you in and serve you little crumpets on a plate. Do you know what a crumpet is, Luana? It tells me right here at the verse. A crumpet is a cookie, just in case you didn't know. And English people think they're tops as far as cookies go. My, you do learn things from the Hallmark dolls of the nations, don't you? Just what the Hallmark folks had in mind when they thought them up. They educate while they fascinate. What else does it say about Anne of England, Luana? Well, it's a real long verse. But here's another part I like. And after tea, she takes you on a trip to London town and show you that the London Bridge has never fallen down. And Anne will say, come see Big Ben, it's awful big and tall. Of course you know Big Ben's a clock and not a man at all. Is Anne of England your favorite, Luana? Oh, no, I love all of them. Rita of Brazil, Katrinka of Holland, and all of them. They're so adorable, with the feather plumes in their hats, and the way they stand up by themselves. I can say you do love them, Luana, and so will every youngster. That's why I'm going to tell all about the Hallmark Dolls of the Nations, how easy they are to buy and send, how little they cost, after we hear the second act of tonight's story. Now, back to James Hilton and Ring Lardner's Elmer the Great, starring Bob Hope. With Elmer Kane on the mound, it was a great season for Cleveland. Ladies and gentlemen, this has really been a ball game. Only two men got to first base on Kane today, which puts the Indians right in line for the pennant. And the pennant is in the bag if they can knock off the Red Sox. There's going to be another exciting ball game tomorrow when Cleveland faces the Red Sox with Kane in the pitcher's box again at his own request. It looks really good for the Indians. Uh, hey, Alma. Oh, hello, Graham. Uh, where are you headed, Alma? Thought I'd take a walk. A uh, friend of mine's running a little dice game. Why don't you come along with me? You, you don't have to play. I really should be up in my room practicing my wind-up. <sighs> hey, Alma, you're real baseball crazy, ain't you? Yeah, you should see my brother Nick. Real crazy about it, huh? Well, we don't say he's baseball crazy. We just say nature gave him a base on balls. <laughs> uh, here, here's the place. Yeah, look at that sign, Shea Sucker. I sell candy in there. I'm sorry you lost, Elmer. Yeah, wiped out my spending money. No candy bars this month, Elmer. I don't mind the candy, just hate to get behind on my comic books. Mr. Kane, Mr. Crabtree, the owner, I'd like to see you in his office. Here's Exhibit A, boss. Thanks, Joe. Sit down, Mr. Kane. I'll stand if you don't mind. I want to mash my donuts. <laughs> Sorry I lost, Mr. Kane. So am I. Those dice couldn't have been loaded, could they? Loaded? Whatever made you think of that? Well, it's the first dice I ever saw that left skid marks. <laughs> but here's my losses. Five dollars and fifty cents. Five dollars and fifty cents? Mm -hmm. You weren't playing for pennies, Mr. Kane. You owe me five thousand five hundred dollars. Five thousand five hundred dollars? That sounds like the tax on something. Now, look here, Mr. Crosby. I'm Mr. Cab Crabtree. <laughs> That's what you owe, Kane. But I don't have it. Well, that puts you in a very bad spot. Yeah, I know. I wonder how Alan Ladd would get out of this. <laughs> Let me see. Well, I can pay you in the fall. By then, the new used cars will be out. No, Kane, it's against the rules of the league for players to mix with professional gamblers. Oh, I see. You think you got me, do you? Think you got me trapped? Up against the wall, huh? Me, Elmer the Great. Well, you just didn't reckon with a mind like a fox. You can't trap me, I tell you. You can't. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so much better than Gregory. Why should I fight it? Kane, I'll tell you how you can square this little debt with me and get a $10,000 profit to boot. Why, you dirty no good and brrrr. Here are the IOUs you signed at the dice tables. I'll turn these over to you and $10,000 besides if Boston wins the ball game tomorrow. 
Good night, Mr. Crabtree. The only reason I'm not killing you right now is because I want to be out in that field tomorrow. If you don't play ball with me, Elmer, you aren't going to play ball any place. Where's the 10000 Here you are. Sign the receipt, please. Now you can stop by and pick the, up, up the IOUs right after the game. Thanks. I'll do that. Hey, did anybody order a funeral piece for the Red Sox? Oh, knock on wood when you say that. Come on, let's get outside and roll it around. Come on. Crowley, you're pitching today. Kane, I want to see you a minute. Crowley pitching? Wait a minute, get I out thought out of the I... field, boys. Yeah, come on, we got to get warmed up. Hey, what's the idea of keeping me out of the game? You're out of the whole series, Kane. You're benched. What for? You and Graham were seen coming out of Crabtree's joint last night. This morning, I had your tail all the way to Whalen's gambling hangout. You denied that, you double-crossing, no-good, yellow stiff. No, but... And look at this. Here's your signed receipt for ten grand. Crabtree's in jail, and that's where you're going to be. Look, I'm not saying I didn't take the money. I did take it. I had to. It was the only way I could square things. I don't say what I did was the right thing to do, but it was the only way out I could think of. I took that money to bet on myself. To bet on yourself? Sure, I have to pay back the $5,500, so I took that much of the money and bet it on myself to win. After the game, I was going to pay them the money I owed and give them back their 10000 I got the receipt right here. Well, I'll be a Red Sox necktie. You really have. I was going to win the game and pay Crabtree back. I'm no Welsher and I'm no crook. Boss, I got to pitch this game. Kane, I... Kane, you... Well, what are you standing there staring at me for? Get out on the field and play ball. Yes, sir. <laughs> Goodness, isn't that train just the slowest thing? Where's the things for Elmer to eat on the way home? Right here, and you keep out of them. You must be so proud of him, Mrs. Kane. You did a real fine thing, Nellie, sending Elmer off like you did. I certainly have missed him. Here's a train. Is Elmer driving it? Oh, where is he? Where's Elmer? Now, don't get excited, Ma. Hey, Ma, you got anything to eat? Oh, Elmer. Elmer, you look just grand. Hi, Elmer. Gee, that was sure great winning that pennant. Oh, it was nothing any other red-blooded American boy couldn't have done with this script. <laughs> Hello, Elmer. Hello, Elmer. Well, if it ain't Nellie, the gal from the store. Elmer, don't tell me success has gone to your head. No, I'd made a couple of trips, but gave up when I couldn't find any room. <laughs> Say, Ma, how long since folks have been able to get off the train right here in Gallup Police? Why, Elmer, you could always leave the train here in Gallipolis. I know, but it used to be so much trouble climbing out of those mailbags. <laughs> it's nice to have you back, Elmer. Yeah, it's nice to be back. Awful tough on those Cleveland gals, though. They sure put up a fuss, clawed at my clothes, threw themselves under the train. Finally had to sign their autograph books. Well, I'm sorry you had such a tough time. I'll see you, Elmer. Goodbye. Yeah, see you around, Nellie. Elmer, that's no way to treat Nellie. When's she marrying Arthbutnot Lake? Arthbutnot Lake? Yeah, what? that kid. He married Burl Williams the week after you left town. He did? Well, I swan. <laughs> Bye, Cracky. Hiya. Hey, Nellie, wait for me. Wait for me. Ma, hold my box of Fig Newtons while I run her down. <laughs> Nellie! She's going down through the pasture. Doggone, forgot all about the tree in the meadow. Are you... Are you all right, Elmer? I'll know in a minute, Nellie. I'm taking inventory. Say, hey, you, you remember the guy I was telling you about? You mean the guy that knew a girl, but the girl didn't know about the guy caring, and the guy didn't know what to do about the girl not knowing about the guy caring, and the guy tried to tell the girl that didn't know about the guy caring, but couldn't? What would the guy do? Huh? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's the guy. No, I don't remember him. Well, the guy find out, found out what to say. Well, I imagine he did, considering all the girls in the Cleveland Depot. Yeah, well... Hey, Nellie, you're jealous. Well, who wouldn't be? Oh, I guess any intelligent girl would be at that. <laughs> Elmer, if you found out what to say, why don't you say it? Okay. I love you, Nell girl. Will you marry me? Suppose I say yes. 
Will you always love me? I sure will. And you'll think of me always, even when you're working? I sure will. And while you're sleeping? I sure will. And while you're eating? Love sure is a wonderful thing. In a moment, James Hilton will return to tell you about next week's story. Meanwhile, here's what I promised to tell you about the new Hallmark Dolls of the Nations. There are eight of them, each from a different country, and they make a wonderful gift for children because they educate while they fascinate. Yes, children love them and learn from them, too. Love them because each doll is in full color, stands up by itself, has a real feather plume in its hat. And learn from them because inside each doll is a clever rhyme story about the land it comes from. Now listen, these colorful hallmark dolls that children love and that educators say are a fine influence on young minds cost only 25 cents each and are as easy to send as any hallmark greeting card. There is a big hallmark doll collector's album to keep them in too, and it's only 50 cents. For only one dollar, you can get the album and two hallmark dolls of the nation. See them tomorrow at the store where you buy your Hallmark greeting cards. Now here again is James Hilton. Thank you, Bob Hope, for giving us your usual great performance. And you played the part of that Cleveland pitcher with real feeling. Well, believe me, after the past couple of days, I have a lot of feeling for those Cleveland pitchers. <laughs> of course, you know, I'll be sitting in that stadium tomorrow watching them in my hometown. They ought to take protection along, Mr. Hilton. <laughs> but my hat's off to all those Cleveland boys, the way they're playing, and also the Braves. They're putting up a nice fight. <laughs> say, uh, while I'm tipping my top piece I'd like to say thanks to the Hallmark people For those wonderful Dolls of the Nation's albums They sent to my kids You know, Linda and Tony have learned a lot about the world from these dolls Of course, they were a little surprised When they found out that the Chamber of Commerce Allowed the sun to shine outside of Los Angeles County <laughs> But they're mighty pleased with their gift And they should be Those dolls are great Thanks to all you Hallmark people Thank you again, Bob Hope and we warmly invite you and our audience to listen during the following weeks when we on the Hallmark Playhouse will be pleased to bring you such stories as Sinclair Lewis's Arrowsmith, Louis Brumfield's Mrs. Parkington, and Stephen Vincent Benet's O'Halloran's Luck, with some of Hollywood's most distinguished stars taking part in them. So plan your Thursdays well ahead and continue to be our guest at the Hallmark Playhouse. Until next Thursday, then, when we present Sinclair Lewis's Arrowsmith, starring John Lund. This is James Hilton saying good night. Tonight's story was adapted for radio by Gene Holloway with music composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. Our director-producer is Dee Engelbach. Bob Hope appeared through the courtesy of Swan Soap and will soon be seen in the Paramount picture, The Pale Face. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present Sinclair Lewis's Aerosmith starring John Lund. This program came to you from the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.